Good morning everyone, Tater here. Welcome to Tater Games and today we're actually going to continue talking about functions but this time we have some visual help. So, let's do it. So the first thing I thought about was, um, I was just going to show you how functions work and stuff like that. It's quite easy, it's not too hard and it's going to pretty much replace the video that I was talking about functions. What an idiot. I thought I could talk about it and everyone would understand, but you know, some people didn't, so this is for those people, and sorry if I wasted your time, and apologies if that whole video was a waste of your time. Anyway, let's get straight into it and we shall start. So when you open up Unity for the first time, we are going to see um, that everything's empty and we are going to want to create a new C Sharp script. Now I've already created one, I've called it test. And within our script, you are going to see the exact same thing as what I'm seeing right now. You're going to already get two functions that are by default in that script. And they are known as the start function and the update function. Now you're going to notice that this is the structure of a function, something that I tried to explain, but apparently that's not how, how you're supposed to do it. Explanation only works for some people. Um, so that is the function of it. Uh, that, that is the function of a function. That is the structure of a function right there, and within the middle is like the meat of a burger. It's really like, um, that's what's holding it together, the fact that it is a function. Now these two functions work in different ways, and they are sort of automatic functions. So the start function right here is going to run whatever is within it every single time whatever's holding that script enters the game, or is instantiated or placed into the game or any time the script just starts for the very first time, whatever's inside there is going to start, right? And inside the update function, it's kind of like constantly checking and constantly running through every single frame. And when I say frame, I don't mean frame rate, like usually people play games at 60 frames per second. It's not like that frame rate, it's a computer's processor sort of frame rate. That's all functions are, just things that sort of hold crucial information and if we want to do something we can call our own function that we can make up and we are going to make up one right here. We are going to make a void tater function, right? Now the name of it doesn't actually matter at the end of the day, as long as you don't call it start or update then you're good to go. Um, so the tater function can do anything we want within it. We can change a few variables, but first of all, we are going to need some variables. So if we go up to our very top, we can create a variable. Uh, what should I call it? I'll call it um, people. First of all, I need to claim what the variable is. So I'm going to say that it's an integer and it's going to be called people and it's going to equal zero when we start our script. So at the very start of the script, I'll just save that. At the very start of the script, people equals zero. Now in the tater function, we are going to go, let's say people plus equals one, which means every time tater is used or every time we call tater, the people increase by one, right? The total amount of people, it starts at zero. Every time we call tater, it increases by one. So how are we going to control what's happening here? How are we going to call Tater to tell him to, hey, increase our people by one? Well, all we want to do to call that function is actually just write the name, which is Tater, and then brackets and semicolon, which is pretty damn simple. Which means within our start function, we are going to be calling the Tater function, which means the Tater function is actually going to be run at the start of the script. So whenever the script is alive or comes to life, it is going to run the Tata function and the people are going to increase by one. So that's pretty cool, but we kind of want a way to display how many people there are. So if we go down here, I'm just going to quickly write a debug.log and then I'm going to write people uh, is equal to plus, you, you guys don't need to know this. <laughs> probably handy to learn actually how to debug something but I can always teach that another day. What this does is pretty much within our console uh, it's going to display people equals space and then display the number of people that we have every single time Tater is called. So every time we plus a person or add a person it's going to go hey we we got another guy <laughs> or girl no hard feelings to either. <laughs> 
So under the update function, which is called all the time, I'm actually going to do something cool, which is get the left mouse button down. So I'm just going to write boolean or bool. Uh, I'm going to call it left uh, mb, and then I'm going to go equals input dot get. What do we want? We want mouse down. Get mouse button down, and it is left key is zero. So we're going to put zero in there, and we're going to close it all off with a semicolon right there. I'm just going to give it a bit of a save. And now we have a Boolean that says, I'm actually going to teach a little bit about this as well. This is pretty cool. So the Boolean function uh, is a true or false statement. By default, it is false because our, we are not pressing the left mouse button. But the moment that we do press that left mouse button and the update function is constantly checking whether or not we're pressing that left mouse button, the moment that we press it, it's going to say, ah, the Boolean is now true for the single frame, which means that anything underneath is going to consider that the left MB Boolean, the left MB variable is true, which means if we put an if statement saying if left MB is equal to true, if we put this statement there, then that means that it's going to say yes. It's going to run whatever is within this if statement because the boolean is equal to true, but only for that one frame that we have pressed the left mouse button. So within this, I'm actually going to call the Tata script, right? I'm going to call it here and then brackets and a semicolon to end it all off. Then I'm going to hit save and I'm going to get rid of it from the start function actually and then I'm going to hit save again. So when we start our script, nothing will happen. Uh, the people will be equal to zero, not until we press our left mouse button on our mouse uh, is it going to call Tata and our people are going to increase by one and then it's going to say to us, hey, people is now equal to one. And then people is now equal to two. So let's go ahead and let's test that. First of all, I've chucked the script onto the light, the directional light, um, but it doesn't really matter where it is. I'm going to click on the console here so we can see what is being called. I'm going to hit play. And now every time I press the left mouse button, it should increase by one. As you can see, it is increasing by one. Amazing. <laughs> it's actually, it is really cool to do simple stuff every now and then it's quite fun to see. So I used to do this all the time. I used to just see how fast I could go. So there we go. That's how you increase the number by one. <laughs> but we can do a whole bunch of mathematics within this. For example, we could just go real ham and then uh, we could go real ham, but that's going to take up a lot of time. And I kind of just wanted to explain what functions were to you guys. Um, but there is one more function I haven't mentioned, which is the IE numerator function, which is a very important function because it can handle time. So if I was to create a new one, instead of writing void, I'm going to write IE numerator right there. Then I'm going to give it a name like Gary. Gary's going to love this. And then I'm going to create it pretty much exactly the same as the Tata function, except IE numerator instead of void. Now, what we can do is within that Gary function, we can actually manipulate time or make it wait for time or make it wait until something is something, right? So what we want to do here is we are going to actually make this wait. And the way we do this is with a wait for second script, which requires a yield. Uh, we need to return to the top and we need to make a new wait for seconds every time which means we need that's okay <laughs> if you guys want to just copy and paste that <laughs> i don't want to explain it it's going to take a while okay so within the brackets after the wait for seconds is sort of the time parameter type thing how many seconds you want it to wait now remember last time i explained that floats and ints are two different numbers ints are whole numbers remember we can't have half a person that is why we are using an int to count our people which means that when it comes to time, time can be in a decimal place. You can have 1.1 of a second, you can have 1.2 of a second. You can't have 1.1 of a human being. So the idea behind it is that it has to be a float, right? And the way we do this is we give it the time that we want. Let's say we want two seconds. Let's say that we want 2.2 seconds. For this, I'm just going to do two seconds. But the way we declare to the computer to make it acknowledge it as a float, we are just going to put a little bit of an F at the end of it. So 2F which means two seconds. But 
because it's judging time, it can actually read that as, oh, okay, so we are judging time. We're not going to error. We are not going to tell you, hey, you can't count time in seconds. You have to count time in milliseconds and all this type of stuff. So we're just going to save that right there. And then underneath it, we can do anything we really want. So maybe wait two seconds and then we say people is equal to zero. That's pretty counterproductive, but what I'm going to do is actually copy this debug thing and I'm going to paste it underneath our people are equal to zero and I'm actually going to get rid of the uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to get rid of this and goes reset to reset to boom. All right, so now if I've just created a little debugging thing there, so the idea behind it is that we come, we call the Tata script by pressing the left mouse button. The Tata script runs, increases the people by one, and then it's going to call the Gary script after it's told us how many people there are currently. So it's going to call the Gary script, right? But we cannot write it like I've just written it there. That is how you call a void function. The way we want to call a IE numerator function is by starting a coroutine. And the way we do this is by typing start coroutine. And then we want the brackets and the semicolon. Now we want to claim which coroutine we are starting. And we are starting Gary. So within those brackets, we are just going to write Gary. And then we're going to put two more brackets uh, facing inwards. And that's pretty much it. Now that's going to start the coroutine of Gary after it is called the Tata function. Pretty cool. And now we can actually loop it back to continue doing this little dance we got going on here. So within the Gary function, I can actually make it wait another two seconds after it has called the people and said that there are only zero people, after it has reset the people, and afterwards I can actually go people, oh no, no, not people, I'm actually going to call the Tata function again. So once I press the left mouse button, it is going to continuously loop between Tata and Gary. Tata is putting one person there and Gary is taking one away every single time. So let's see how that acts. We can have a bit of fun there and we can watch a computer fight itself. <laughs> so if I press play, right now we need to trigger it with the left mouse button. There we go. People equals one. After two seconds, resets to zero. People equals one. Two seconds, resets to zero. People equals one. Oh, uh, this is funny. <laughs> so that's how you make a computer fight with itself if you're really, really bored. Anyway, guys, hey, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys all have a fabulous week and I hope you guys enjoyed some of the videos I put out this week. I know they're getting kind of a little bit different. Um, I'm just experimenting with a lot of stuff because I am starting to do this a bit more consistently. Um, I'm going to be uploading every weekday for the foreseeable future. So look forward to that. However, tomorrow is Saturday and the day after that is Sunday. Two days that I'm going to be taking off every week. Anyway, hopefully you guys learned a lot from this video and I'm very, again, very, very sorry that the previous one was very poorly explained and I'm sorry I wasted a lot of people's time. Um, but hopefully this redeems it. I thought it was fun. It's cool to do. It's very fun. <laughs> Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend. Be productive and I will see you next Monday when we talk about something random and something cool. See you then.